Okay, Brain Week, part two, or day two, I should say. Well, yesterday we talked about the different uh, lobes, the frontal and temporal and parietal and occipital. Today I thought we would, we would look at some other outstanding features you can kind of see on the outside, okay? The outside. So, um, here you have the medulla, formerly medulla oblongata, but people typically say medulla. Uh, means medulla oblongata means extended marrow and that's exactly what it is right it, it this turns into the spine which exits your skull through the foramen magnum which is that big hole and that's what that means foramen magnum big hole anyway so there is that the the medulla oblongata houses all kinds of autonomic uh, functions so so arranges your heart rate your blood pressure your breathing uh, vomiting, for example. So a lot of things that, that you, you don't really have control over and sometimes it's very good you don't have control over that. Imagine what would happen if, if you would have conscious control over your heart rate and you would need to be conscious to control your heart rate and you fall asleep. Then your heart would stop. So it's kind of nice that your medulla does this for you. And then you have the pons. Uh, I think officially pons varolii, named after varolio an Italian anatomist who, who uh, described it for the first time, but to be honest, I, I've never heard anyone use that term, except, I think, uh, Grey's Anatomy, the book, not the series. A somewhat old-fashioned name, I think. So, pawns, but still. And then up there you go to the midbrain, which you can't, you can't really see that. Then you have this, uh, this, this, what is this, peanut-shaped structure there. Uh, that's your pituitary. Right? Very important for the release of certain hormones and the pituitary stalk, which you can't really, you can't really see, but that's, that's there too, that allows the hypothalamus to communicate with the pituitary. Another big structure you have here is your cerebellum, literally little brain, or little cortex, I should say. And, uh, and, and that's uh, very important for fine motor skill. But it turns out to also be important for certain forms of learning, like conditioning. Oh, nearly pulled off a piece there. Anyway, so that's the, the cerebellum. Fun fact about the cerebellum. Your cerebellum has more neurons, brain cells, than the entire cortex has. Fascinating, right? I would say so. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, what else can you see? Oh yeah, okay, if we're talking about the salient features on the on sort of on the outside here you have the olfactory bulbs which have the olfactory tract fiber bundles this is um, right above your nose and this is where a smell gets initially registered and then gets sent to the cortex for further processing and if you want to get really technical this is cranial nerve number one the olfactory nerve cranial nerves are nerves that allow your brain to interact with your body and to a degree the other way around. That's pretty much it. Uh, if there's anything you want me to go over for this week, then just leave a comment, right? And otherwise I'll come up with something myself. Okay, have a good day.